Hi, my name is Lexi Keaton with Discovery Children's Museum, and today we're going to be highlighting women in STEM. I want you to take a second to think about your all-time favorite animal. Is it something cute and cuddly, like a bunny, or maybe something cool and scaly, like a lizard? Well, either way, did you know that you can have a career studying your favorite animal? Let's take a look at biologist Joe Varner, who gets to study some of the cutest animals in the West, pikas. My name is Johanna Varner, but many people know me as Pika Joe. I am a pika biologist, which means that I get to study the cutest animals in the world. Um, they look a little bit like a cross between a guinea pig and a potato, but they're actually more closely related to rabbits. I actually have sort of an unusual, I guess, and non-linear career path to becoming a pika biologist. I started out as a bioengineer, so I actually did a master's of bioengineering at MIT, and after that I was a little bit burned out after five years there, and I took some time off. I um, went to New Zealand and I worked on plum orchards and it wasn't until I was back from New Zealand that I read a newspaper article about pikas, which I knew about from my experience hiking in the mountains and from watching nature shows, which I do a lot of. And I had this total aha moment that there's this whole group of people out there called ecologists and they work in nature and they go hiking and camping and they watch these adorable animals run around and it's science. And I was like, I do that stuff for fun anyway. And so I went into graduate school um, to study pikas. So I have a, a study site in southern Utah, a mountain range called the Los Salles, and we backpack all of our stuff up to the site. We actually camp up at the up close to where the pikas live. And then what we did get to do is just go and, and watch their behavior. We sort of write down what they eat. We write down how active they are. We collect a hair sample and I have some collaborators who are going to be doing some genetic analyses with the cells that are you know come along on the hair sample. And we place colored ear tags in to help us identify exactly who it is. And we come back to the same site and, and look for the same animal and um, and see how they're doing. It's okay to change your mind about what it is you want to do and that it's okay not to know what it is that you want to do right now and that there's no such thing as wasting time in things that don't end up becoming your career because even if you discover that something isn't your passion, you still will have gained some really useful experience and some really important transferable skills that then you can apply towards um, towards other things. I feel like when I was 17, I really literally still was thinking like, I wanna be a neuroscientist or an astrophysicist or a paleontologist or you know maybe an engineer. And you know people would be like, you know you're gonna to have to declare a major. <laughs> and those things don't have a lot of overlapping coursework. And I think that it's really nice now looking back to know that even though I didn't end up becoming a professional engineer, I learned a lot of really important skills during my time as an engineer. If young girls get to know women in science as real people, then they may be more likely to envision themselves as scientists. If you can't wait to get started studying your favorite animal, you can actually start right now. Joe Varner runs what's called a citizen science program. Basically, she teaches everyday people like us how to study pikas and collect data that she can use in her studies. We don't have pikas here in Las Vegas, but there are other great citizen science programs like Zooniverse, iNaturalist, and the Great Backyard Bird Count. So get out there and start exploring!